So if you look at each of these four by six grids, it's pretty clear that there's 24 of these green circle things in each of them. But what I want to show you is that you can get 24 as the product of three numbers in multiple different ways. And it actually doesn't matter which products you take first or what order you actually do them in. So let's think about this first. So the way that I've colored it in, I have these three groups of four. If you look at the blue highlighting, this is one group of four, two groups of four, three groups of four. Actually, let me make it a little bit clearer. One group of four, two groups of four, and three groups of four. So these three columns you could view as three times four. Now, we have another three times four right over here. This is also three times four. We have one group of four, two groups of four, and three groups of four. So you could view these combined as two times three times four. We have one three times four, and then we have another three times four. So the whole thing we could view as, the whole thing we could view as, let me get my, give myself some more space, as two times, let me do that in blue, two times three times four. That's the total number of balls here. And you can see it based on how it was colored. And of course, if you did three times four first, you get 12. And then you multiply that times two, you get 24, which is the total number of these green circle things. And I encourage you now to look at these other two, pause the video, and think about what these would be the product of. First looking at the blue grouping, then looking at the purple grouping in the same way that we did right over here. And verify that the product still equals 24. Well, I assume that you've paused the video. So you see here in this first, in this first, I guess you could call it a zone, we have two groups of four. So this is two times four right over here. We have one group of four, another group of four. That's two times four. We have one group of four, another group of four. So this is also two times four if we look in this purple zone. One group of four, another group of four. So this is also two times four. So we have three two times fours. So if we look at each of these are all together, this is three times two times four. So three times two times four. Two times four. Notice, I did a different order, and I'm, and I'm here I did three times four first, here I'm doing two times four first. But just like before, two times four is eight, eight times three is still equal to 24, as it needs to, because we have exactly 24 of these green circle things. Once again, pause the video and try to do the same here. Look at the groupings in blue, then look at the groupings in purple, and try to express these 24 as a product of, of, of some kind of product of two, three, and four. Well, you see first, we have these groupings of three. So we have one grouping of three in this purple zone, two groupings of three in this purple zone. So you could do that as two times three. And we have one three and another three. So in this purple zone, this is another two times three. We have another two times three. Whoops, I wrote two times two. Two times three, we have another two times three. Two times three. And then finally we have a fourth two times three. So how many two times threes do we have here? Well, we have one, two, three, four two times threes. So this whole thing could be written as, could be written as four times two times three, two times three. Now what's this going to be equal to? Well, it needs to be equal to 24, and we can verify. Two times three is six, times four is indeed 24. So what I'm, the whole idea of what I'm, what, I'm, what I'm trying to show here is that the order in which you multiply does not matter. How you associate it, this is some, let me make it, this very clear. So whether you do, let me pick a different example, a completely new example. So let's say that I have, Let's say that I have four times five times six. You can do this multiplication in multiple ways. You could do four times five first, or you could do four times five times six first. And you can verify that. I encourage you to pause the video and verify that these two things are equivalent. And this is actually called the associative property. It doesn't matter how you associate these things, which, which of these that you do first. Also, order does not matter. and We've seen that multiple, multiple times. Whether you do this or you do five times four times six, notice I swapped the five and four, this doesn't matter. Whether you do this or six times five 
times 4. Doesn't matter. Here I swapped the 6 and the 5 times 4. All of these are going to get the exact same value. And I encourage you to pause the video. So when we're talking about which one we do first, where we, where we, which, whether we do the 4 times 5 first or the 5 times 6, that's called the associative property. It's kind of a fancy word for, for a reasonably simple thing. And when we're saying that order doesn't matter, whether, where, when it doesn't matter whether we do 4 times 5 or 5 times 4, that's called the commutative property. And once again, fancy word for a very simple thing, just saying it doesn't matter what order I do it in.